The topic of this video is Mathematical Models Building Functions. This is a continuation of the previous video. All right, so we've now gotten to the part of the problem where we're ready to address parts C and D. Part C using a graphing utility graph A of X and part D for what value of X is A largest. Once again, we're going to go over the skill first and then the concept second. Let's begin with the skill. So the skill is you need a graphing utility. You need to input your function A of X. So we're going to go to desmos.com, www.desmos.com. We'll click start graphing, and then we're going to enter our equation. Now you can see that I've actually got this already entered here over here on the screen. I'm just going to turn this on. So this is y equals negative x cubed plus 9x. And then after that, you might notice in braces, it says 0 is less than x is less than 3. That's the domain we found in part b. I'm going to turn this on, and it's going to give me the graph. And it's only going to show me the part of the graph where the x values, the x coordinates, are between 0 and 3. Normally, this graph would keep going. Uh, at this point right here, the x-intercept at 3, it would keep going down. And at this point, the x-intercept at 0, it would keep going down. But we've got it cut off here because of the domain. So that's how you answer part C, which is using a graphing utility graph A of x. Now, part D says, for what value of x is A largest? Well, that's very easy. Largest means the top. So you just click at the top until a point shows up. Click the point, and it's going to tell you its location. So for what value of x, that would be this value right here, the 1.732 is the area largest. And then the largest area is this value, 10.392. So read carefully the question that you're being asked. If it says what x, that's the 1.732. But if it says what area, that's the a of x, which is the same as y, which is the same as 10.392. All right, that's the end of the skills part. We're now going to get into the concept of this problem. So let's go all the way back to the beginning and get this set up. In the beginning of the problem, we were presented with a parabola, a blue parabola shown here, 9 minus x squared. And you might notice that I've applied the same domain restriction that we found in part b to this parabola for the reason previously shown in another video, which is that our rectangle has to be somewhere in quadrant 1. Next, I'm going to pick an arbitrary point somewhere on this parabola, and it could be anywhere. It could be at this location, or it could be at this location, or it could be at this location. It can be pretty much anywhere. In fact, to show that it literally could be anywhere, I'll push prey on this animation, which shows that this point can be anywhere on the blue parabola. I have it programmed to bounce back and forth from intercept to intercept. So as it reaches the x-intercept, it bounces away, and starts rising to a new location. It will continue to travel up and up and up and up and up until it reaches the y-intercept, at which point it will bounce again and continue that journey back and forth and back and forth. Now we know that the idea here is that we're creating a rectangle where that point, that green point, is the upper right-hand corner. So I'm going to shoot a line straight to the left and straight down from that rectangle excuse me, from that point, which will create this purple rectangle. Now, I want you to notice something about this purple rectangle. As the green point moves back and forth and back and forth, the base and the height of the rectangle change. For example, right now, the base shown here, oops, I clicked a button, didn't mean to do that. Okay, the base shown here is getting thinner and thinner and thinner. The base is getting smaller, but the height is getting taller and taller and taller. So we know that the area of a rectangle is base times height. So if the base gets thinner and thinner and thinner, eventually it will be zero, and then there will be no rectangle, and the area will be zero. Now, as the, dot, the green dot makes its reverse journey, it's the base that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and the height that's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So our rectangle has an area right now, but in a moment, when the green dot reaches the x-axis, the rectangle disappears completely, and momentarily has an area of zero. Okay, now, the next thing I want you to notice is this calculation going on right here. What I have calculating is the base of the rectangle times the height of the rectangle in real time. And I want you to see what's happening to this number. First of all, as the green dot reaches the y-intercept, the value shown here is zero. And as it journeys across, this is getting bigger and bigger. Seven, eight, nine, 10, and so on and so on. But at a certain point, 
it reaches a maximum value and starts decreasing again. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and eventually when the green dot hits the x-axis, it zeroes out. So this is going to bounce back and forth between these two extremes. And when the green dot is sitting exactly at the y-intercept right here, then that means there is no base and therefore the area of the rectangle is zero. But as it leaves this location and it makes its journey across, eventually getting all the way down here to the x-intercept, then the rectangle again disappears because now it has no height and the area is zero. So what we see is that the area of the rectangle is constantly changing. At an intercept, it's zero. But as it travels from one intercept to the other, the area gets bigger and bigger and bigger to some maximum value, and then smaller and smaller and smaller again as it returns to zero. It bounces back and forth from an area of zero to a maximum area to an area of zero, back to the maximum area, and so on and so on and so on. The real question that we want to know then is, as it makes this journey back and forth, what is the maximum area of the rectangle? Certainly it's not zero, it's bigger than that. So watch this number as it goes by. What's the biggest number that you see flashing by here in our little counter? Watch carefully. There it was, did you catch it? It was 10 point something. Let's see if we can get a little more accuracy on our second pass. So the green dot is going to come back. Zero is where we're at. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten point three nine. It looks like ten point three nine is the biggest uh, area that we get from our rectangle. Now I'd like to mention something. In uh, the earlier part of this video, we turned on this curve right here. And we found that at the top of that curve, the maximum area was indeed 10.392. So these things are related to each other. If I were to take the x-coordinate of this green dot and place it at the location 1.732, then that is going to create a rectangle with the maximum area, which is shown here, as 10.392, etc. Any location other than this exact location for the green dot will give an area that is smaller. The moment I push play, this number will go down. Okay, so that illustrates both the skill and the concept needed to understand problems of this type.